Um, so, transformation is the answer, and everyone talks about transformation, we're all transforming. Um, I was at a, last year, I was at a, a, a large scale change event in, in the NHS, and it was that all organisations had to come together and talk about where they were in their transformation agenda. And it was absolutely fascinating because most of the transformation agenda was everyone looking at each other and sort of scratching their heads and, and bandying words around what transformation uh, meant. So, we didn't talk about it, so do we really, are we really talking about transformation? Or are we just talking and talking uh, and dressing ourselves up? Uh, beware people dressed as butterflies. I think that's a very, very, uh, very poignant remark that I always am very wary of anyone who approaches me looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> it often happens. But, uh, um, so transformation is something that once complete would be pretty unrecognisable from its original state. But if we recognise that our original state is something that we want to move away from, that's something that really we should be the future state should be unrecognisable, that, then that shouldn't be something that, that scares us, that should be something that makes us think, right, how are we going to get under this, and how are we really going to start thinking differently. But, 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 the uh, track record of transformation and change is pretty bad. Um, and this is not uh, evidence from health and social care, this is, this is from uh, industry, uh, from studies, academic studies that have been done on major transformational change. Uh, and pretty much what it comes out of, and it's pretty consistent around this, that around 6% actually succeed, 24% uh, plateau. And plateauing is better than failure, because plateauing means you've delivered something, but you don't deliver everything you want to deliver, but you get to a point, but then you just fizzle out. Um, and then there's the big 70% that fail. And there's all sorts of reasons why they fail. I guess the biggest reasons why they fail is because to do real transformation, you've got to go against uh, organisational barriers and organisational incentives. You've got to come up against professional barriers, you've got to come up against cultural barriers, you've got to come up against behavioural barriers. We all at the end of the day want to pay the mortgage and anything that we see ahead of us that's going to give us a problem, in instantly we feel what's this going to mean for us and so you've got all of that around you that is actually mitigating against you being successful in delivering the thing that we want to, su to succeed in. And I think fundamentally at the heart of that, the only way you're going to succeed is if you've got a purpose that you really believe in. And that's what it's all about, is have you got a purpose that you really believe in. This is, uh, I love this one because uh, it uses so many times uh, for so many different things. I think where we've talked about integration in the past between health and social care, uh, we sit around in a, a, in a in a group, and we've, we, I'm sure we'll have had these conversations before, and normally they say, right, what about back office functions? Uh, what about our estates? We do some with them. Uh, we did a bit better procurement, that would probably solve it. Um, what else is there? Struggling now, struggling now. Uh, care, where does that come up? Where do we actually talk about the services that we deliver? Where do we actually talk about who's at the centre of all this? Who's the person who we're trying to look after? It's all the stuff around the periphery. And frankly, you know, we could save everything on in, in all of those back office functions and it still wouldn't deliver what we need to deliver going forward. So it's the wrong discussion. We've got to get out of that loop and we've got to look for that road, which is hidden and it leads into a beautiful, beautiful, sunny place. Right, uh, Wigan. <laughs> uh, Einstein. Uh, Oh, well, this one's up. Insanity is doing the same things over and over again, expecting no different result. And that's us. Uh, but that's what we do. We think next time we do it, it's going to be better. Uh, but it probably won't. Problems can't be solved by the same level of thinking that created them. You've got to think out of the box. You've got to think differently. And that's what you're going to be doing this afternoon. So you're going to be thinking, and you're going to put loads of good ideas, and we're going to grab them. And do them. Well, you're going to do them, actually. <laughs> uh, right. This is what I did earlier. And you really, you really, really got the point straight away because someone said, is it spot the difference? And you're supposed to just shout out the answers to spot the difference. And the whole purpose of this is actually what I was asking, but I didn't say, was what the similarities. And what we always do is look at the differences between our organisations rather than look at the similarities. We're hardwired to say, oh, well, we do things differently. We've got all of these, all of these special things that we do in health and all of these special things that we do in the local authority and social care. But actually, what we do at heart is, is, is really to look after people. There's so much more we do the same than we do differently. And there's so much more we can do the same. 
than we do now. So what would we do differently? Uh, we could really uh, cooperate. We could think about, we could come together and discover a, a common purpose. Uh, thinking outside our structural and organisational boxes. And this is the big one for me, this is the really big one, and this is the thing which is, if we can really get to this point, then we're, we're on a winner. And that's about how can we really design systems and processes, what we do around the needs of the people that we look after. And if we're really focused on that, then we will change the system. And that can be done from the bottom up by teams on the ground, by working with them, by really challenging them, by challenging us as leaders of organisations to say, actually, we shouldn't be putting up with this. There is a better answer, and it's all about designing systems, processes, and care around the people that need them. Um, and I think if we really have a focus on that, and we really believe in it, and I think we know where we're going anyway, then we can mould our own integration models instead of doing what we're doing, struggling through the next few years, and then getting some form of integration imposed on us. I think there's real, real opportunities for us to, to come up with some really radically different answers. And I think there's some really good work going on around in, in, in our organisations at the moment that we just need to capture uh, and pull together. Um, this is a really good um, uh, website, National Voices, uh, People Sharing Health and Care. And it, just, it's, it, it talks about uh, a number of things about how we can we can uh, shape health and care, and comes from views of the of, of people um, uh, around the country. Um, and I think this is really important. Let's forget about um, organisational barriers, and let's think about what we're doing, because form should follow function. Most of the time we have discussions, and we think about the form first, so we think about, oh, well, let's join again, let's have a joint management structure. But actually, we're not really thinking about the care that we're delivering there, or why we want a joint management structure. We should only have a joint management structure if it makes care better. It's designing the care first, which is the important thing. People can give a monkey who provides the care, as long as it's joined up, it doesn't matter. So we don't have to fight to start off with around, well, this is my stuff and that's your stuff. Let's just work that out as we, as we go through. You've got to be brave to start that discussion, but it's a discussion worth having. Um, and that's what people really want. There's no gaps in the system. You know who's in charge of your care. You know who's going to see you through. And you've got some hope. And you've got a way of saying, I'm in this position now. And I've got a way of, of, of seeing my way through it and, and getting in a better place. That's all all of us want when we, uh, when we get into problems, uh, whether in terms of our, our livelihood or, or whether it's in terms of our health. And this is. Um, what, what do we think the level of our ambition is? And I guess working together can be cooperative, collaborative, uh, interoperable, uh, or integrated. And the bacon and eggs is there, because on a, on, a, on a plate of food, you've got two things in there. Um, the, the chicken, I guess, has got an interest in that meal. It's, uh, you know, it's quite, it's got an interest, past an interest, produces the eggs, that's great. Uh, the, the pig's really committed to it. <laughs> and that's the difference. Are we the chicken or are we the pig? Um, so, you know, are we the pig? That's where we should be. And that's the direction we should be going in. And we shouldn't be looking at one size fits all because across our circle, we start in some areas where we'd be cooperative and collaborative. There are some where you can go straight to that point and say, actually, that's something we're going to pull together now. It's about thinking out of the box, it's about thinking about the people, it's about thinking about care, and giving people, giving people in our services the opportunity to design services that we really want. Excellent. And on that note, I'm just going to say David Scott Merger talks. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>